Okay, hi all. This is a quick um, overview here of the January 2020 paper, which is uh, one of the last ones we've actually got. Um, just before I go through this into much detail, I just want to take you back to Study Zone because Study Zone has lots and lots and lots of very, very important things on here for you. So inside most of these options here, you will see uh, quizzes. There's also PowerPoint presentations, which will help you with your learning. Towards the bottom of the page, we've got all the past papers. So all the past papers that we've actually got, they're all here, as well as the mark schemes. And as you can see, I've put the mark scheme for this one on, as well as the one for 2022. These are the latest ones we've got. So it'll be, well, it makes sense to use them. The other thing as well to look at, if I just go back to the overview here, on the bottom of the page, you can see there's new GCSE revision videos. These are short videos, which will take you through a variety of different techniques. They're well worth looking at. They won't take you long. Just click on them, watch them and listen to them. And they work on virtually any device as well. Okay, so it's well worth getting over to study zone and using the resources that we've put there for you. Okay, so the 2020 exam was quite a nice exam. And just to show you, the exam is going to be an hour and a half long because obviously I haven't seen you for a while. So I just wanted to remind you that it's an hour and a half long and it's worth 80 marks in total. Now, yours should be worth 80, but it might be worth a little bit less. It depends on um, what they've done in terms of um, adjusting questions, because I know the other paper, which was sat by some people, um, last week was out of 72 but don't worry just concentrate on the questions inside now then this paper starts off with a really 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 nice question these are asking you to label which ones are input and output devices as you can see here it's with four marks therefore it's asking for four things so we can see a keyboard a keyboard is an input device a mouse is an input device and the monitor is an output device and the speakers give us something so that is a output device at the bottom of the page, you can see it says, other than the devices named above, name two different devices that are suitable for use with the multimedia software. You could have things like a printer. So let me just put this in. You could have a printer. You could have a webcam. Or a microphone. These are going to be acceptable answers. And don't forget, it's only worth two marks. It's only, they only want sort of two things there and the key with this even though there's a few lines it just says name two different so it doesn't want an explanation as what they used for so you can just name them and then get the marks there if you look at this one this next question this is number uh, question two part a um, we are given the different options here and we've got to basically match these options with the crime Okay, so uh, the use of fake websites that look like legitimate websites used by fraudsters to collect information about the users. Now, you typically would think, ah, oh, fraud. Okay, you might go with phishing, but just read the next one. The practice of using emails that appear to be from a legitimate company in order to trick the user into disclosing private information. Now, then, these two are very similar. However, the main difference between it is one is sent via a website and one is sent via an email. Now, any time you have a type of fraud over email where it's trying to collect your personal information, it's always going to be phishing. All right. Now, the top one there is going to be farming. Uh, the reason they say that is because they're trying to harvest information. And then the last one there obviously has to be ransomware, which is where the software threatens uh it won't release your data until money is paid. So ransomware goes here. Okay. Now then, if you look at the uh, next part there, it says there are many methods of protecting access to data. State four different methods. Now with this question, it's basically not saying physical methods or it's not saying software methods. So you can basically put either or. So my best answers for this would be something like having a password. So password protection. Uh, 
that would be uh, one of the best ones. You can also have uh, backups. Because that is a mechanism to protect data. You can always restore from it. Um, a lot of people will say about viruses. So an antivirus. And I'd always go with something to stop hackers getting in and uh, messing around with data. So you'd have a firewall. Okay. Now then, if you look at the next part, oh, just before we go into the next part, there are more answers that you could have for this section. The other answers include things like having a guard or locks on the door or having some form of um, protection there just to stop anyone just walking into a, say, a building and then taking PCs out or servers out or something like that. But these four are probably the easiest to remember. Okay, the next part, uh, give two disadvantages of using a computer to store data. So this is looking at just general computers storing data instead of say a filing cabinet or something like that. But we are after the disadvantages, right? Very important. So the disadvantage, well, obviously there's gonna be security issues, security. So security issues, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna elaborate on that, security. Um, hackers, we could say something like hackers could uh, steal data or hackers might uh, take data. All right. The next one, then, if we're not going to... Well, we've done security there with that one, and we look at hackers. The other one, then, could be either cost of equipment could be high or staff need to be trained. So I'm going to put staff need to be trained. On how to use the system. Okay, now you'll notice with these two questions, um, there's a few lines for them, right? These, this top one here, the trigger word there says state. So if it says state, you just need to give the answer. Um, this one here, all it says give, which again is a, is fine, it's, it's not asking you for a lot of explanation, but they're giving you two lines, so obviously you can try and fill them. Okay, if you look at uh, this one, this has never been asked before in this way, but it's a nice question. So it's got Monte A, Monte B, One's here and one's here. So they are different sizes. So one has a physical size of 40, ooh, 42 inches. The other one has a physical size of 22 inches. However, the difference is the resolution. So the resolution on this one is 2048 by 1500. The resolution of this one is 3840. Therefore, the resolution is bigger on Monta B. Now, if you read it here, Monterey will have a more clearly defined picture. Well, actually, that's false. It won't have a more clearly defined picture. The Monte B would, because there's more pixels in it. An image at Monterey resolution will use more storage. Well, no, that's false, because they would use the same. Right? Just because it's scaled up doesn't mean it uses any more. Okay, give the name of the interface that allows a musical instrument and a computer to communicate. This is always MIDI, M-I-D-I, -I, right, MIDI. Now, th if this comes up, if there's a musical question in your exam, I guarantee you this question always comes up. This one always comes up with music, right? Now, we've got another type of question where we've got to fill the blanks in. There's your options. So sound from musical instruments is in, well, it's an analog format. that needs to be converted into a digital format for the computer to process it. A common file format for compressed music is, it's gonna be MP3. So MP4 is a video and WMV is a video as well, okay? Define the following terms. Now this one's a little bit more tricky, right? So basically what they want you to do is explain what these are going to be used for so this sound wave editor is typically used for editing sound waves so it's editing sound 
This is used for editing sound. Uh, a notator, that is where um, musical scores are written on to uh, say a piece of paper or something like that. So what you could say is um, And the sequencer, well, that is used um, to produce, basically when you've got multi-tracks coming together. So, used to place multiple tracks together. Okay, now if we look at the bottom part there, right, four. Uh, the following are terms that, descri oh, that describe website features. Match the term. Oh, these are nice questions, these ones are. Okay, so what are the terms? So this is a unique web address, which every web page has. It's a URL. Okay, so it's a URL, Uniform Resource Locator. Uh, this is a way of finding specific information. So it's obviously we're searching, so it's a keyword search. Um, this element is used for getting to another location or web page from a hypertext document. So obviously there's a clue in there. It's a hyperlink. So we are links. And then the last one there, look, an animation usually at the top of the web page, it's a banner. Now then, if you look here, um, we've got when paying for web hosting, Companies often give prices based on the bandwidth and storage. Give one way an image can be optimized. Oh gosh, lovely question. So with this question, there's three big answers. You can reduce the physical size. Yeah, you can also reduce the quality or reduce the colors, but I'm gonna go with reduce the physical size. Every color has a hexadecimal code. Now then, we haven't really touched much on this, but just to give you an idea, hexadecimal codes are basically numbers. So for example, um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, will equate to a color, as will 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That will equate to a different color. And you may have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, I'm going to make this up and then that will be a color. So what it allows you to do is get an exact color. So if you look there, it's got every color has a hexadecimal code. Give one advantage. Well, it allows you to have an exact color. So you can basically, it's easier then, instead of guessing what, what the color shade is, it allows you to pick an exact color. Okay, right, look at that one now. Tick the box. So we're ticking, right? The correct box to show if the statement is true or false. Okay, HTML is a language used to code web pages. That is true. So we're gonna tick that one. Speaker notes are used to improve access to web pages. Well, no, speaker notes don't, they are just there for the um, audience to read or the narrator to read. Social media, shopping for all, and email images are examples of possible web icons. Yep, that's true. Hyperlinks are animated effects that happen between web pages. No, that is a transition, but obviously that one there is false. Okay, if you look at the next one, we're looking at animation. Now you probably will get an animation question in your exam. So, the process by which the eye is fooled into thinking the picture is still moving is known as, it's called persistence of vision. OK, 
Okay, so persistence of vision. Now then, if you look at the next part, this is with three marks here, right? So it's with three marks for you. So they probably after three things. So describe in details what's meant by keyframe. So keyframes are the start and the end points. So that's what I'm gonna write down, keyframes. are uh, the start and end points of an animation. Now we'd actually get one mark for that, right? Now you'll get the next mark for saying the computer will generate the what we call in between frames okay so you get three marks for this so where do the three marks come from well you get a mark for saying start and end frame right then you'll say to generate and then in between frames that's where your three marks actually come from with this question okay the next part there onion skin in a little bit easier so it is the process of keeping previous frames visible to allow the animator to keep track of movement. Okay, so basically you can see by the horse, which is here, the horse looks, if you look at the legs here, looks as if they are a little bit blurry. However, what that does is it shows you how the legs are moving. So you can see they're in different shades, but the other ones then that are sort of less shaded out, that's showing you where the current position is within that frame. Okay, so six is looking at um, networks. Networks are beautiful questions. Genuinely, no, they are really, really, really good. And again, they ask similar things all the time. So if you look here, it says, describe the difference between intranet and internet. Now, the key trigger point with this is they've used the word describe, right? So you can see there's a few lines here. So you need to sort of write a little bit about it. So what is the difference? Well, an intranet is internal to a company and an internet is worldwide. So what you need to say is uh, an intranet will be uh, hosted single company whereas the internet is a worldwide network linking computers together okay so basically the intranet is closed private internal to the company and internet is obviously worldwide and we can access describe the difference between a local area network and a wide area network and this is very similar these two questions are very similar but again they have asked a describe again so they've asked for a description so what you need to say is um with a lan so um with a lan 
all computers will be fairly close to one another. Whereas a one is over a large is a term they use geographical area, right? All that means is a local network is local to the company, whereas the WAN is large and it's it's basically it could be a spanning country, it could be spanning the other side of the world. Okay. Now then what we need to do here is draw a network and as you can see it's not actually telling us to label anything apart from three items of hardware so we're drawing a star so what i would do is i normally draw something in the middle right and then i put something out here and i'd say something like um pc or you can say computer i do another one here pc and then what I would do is I would then say something along the lines of a um, like a switch. But sometimes you can put the switch in the middle, but I'm not for this one. Switch. Then we may have a printer. And I've kind of now pretty much done with my uh, thing. So I'm going to do one more to make it look like a star. And I'm going to have PC there as well. So where would you get the marks? Will you get one mark for the items of so printer switch and pc um you get one mark in for the actual star itself as well so you get four marks there in total which is nice okay need two other topologies oh you'd have a line network right or sometimes known as a bus um or you could have a ring network now there is another type of network called a mesh which is what the uh internet is explain the difference between gateways and bridges right okay so a gateway is a land to a one so a, ga a gateway links a local area network so a local network to a wide network right um but note this is two marks here right there's two marks a bridge so let me take that out a bridge links two Local, I can't write here at the moment. Area networks together. Okay, lovely. So that's got now you two marks. Okay, okay. So this one here, page 10, question 7. Human computer, human computer interfaces are needed for humans to use computers. Name the type of HCI. This is a graphical user interface or GUI. So GUI, graphical user interface. Okay. Give a different suitable use for each of the following HCIs. So a touch sensitive interface. I would say a mobile phone. Or tablet. All right, a menu driven interface. Well, menu driven interfaces are normally on uh, things like skyboxes. However, when you are talking about things like that, you can't just say a skybox. So it's actually called a digital video recorder. All right, so a digital video recorder. 
right? They typically have menu interfaces, but you could also say games console. And a voice-driven interface. Well, a voice-driven interface, you could say a mobile phone. However, if you've used mobile phone on this one here, do not use mobile phone on the lower one. So I've already said that, so we can't use it. So you could have a customer services telephone call as an example. Now, I don't know if you've ever rang um, a company for support or anything like that, and they've normally said, uh, in a few words, describe your issue. If any of you ever have to ring Virgin Media, they do that all the time. What that does is it's using voice recognition, and what it's doing is it's trying to analyse what you are um, saying and then put you through to the right person. So this one here, give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a command line interface. Now, command lines are brilliant because they're very quick um, to execute instructions. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, advantage so advantage uh, they are a quick way to execute instructions and the disadvantages um, basically you have to learn specific instructions Okay, right, next one, blank page. Okay, organizations use a payroll system. Now, I really, really, really hope you don't get payroll systems because they are one of the harder parts of this exam. But there are a few things that you can remember. Okay, so a payroll system always uses a batch processing method. Okay, so if you look at this question here, it says state what processing method is used for payroll and give one reason. So it's always going to be a batch processing and the reason it is batch is because it's done at the end of a week or a day end of a day or end of a month so all the processing is done or completed at the end of a period, e.g. weekly. Don't forget the other type of processing you've got is real time, which is done instantly. And that's used for things like traffic lights and so forth. Give one item of data that would appear in both the master and transaction, well, payroll number. Would be one and other than name and contact details three other fields that would be included in the master file now this is basically what would we as a employer hold an employee right so if you're a big company what would we need to know about them well things like your date of birth all right we need to know that we need to know your bank details we need to pay you we also would need to know things like your uh, national insurance number or how many hours you've worked or your overtime rate there's loads and loads of loads and loads of things that uh, you could put down uh, for this one i would say national insurance number Okay, right, let's look at the next part. Describe how the use of ICT has had a positive and negative impact on the environment. Now, one thing I want you to just look at, look at how the questions have suddenly changed. You've now got four marks for this and you've got a load of lines. And look at the next one, you've got another four marks for this and a load of lines, okay, before we go on to the last one. 
So this is a trend that I've noticed in a lot of the exams where they've changed the structure. You used to just get one, used to get one really, really big um, exam question at the end, but now they've kind of got bigger towards the end. So describe how the use of ICT has had a positive and negative impact on the environment. Now, with this, you need to write this as a proper sort of chunk of text because it's asking for describe. I am not going to do it for now. I'm just going to put bullet points in just to show you what you need to do, but you then need to sort of talk about it. The first thing I would look at is video conferencing. Or working from home, right? So video conferencing. So that allows you to not commute to the office and you are going to basically save the planet. Um, you also could have something like GPS systems, right, to know where you're going or how to route, um, route you around if you get into a bit of an issue. You could look at things like um, let's have a look, do, 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 do. automation, right? So automated heating. Right, so you could look at automation. Now, there's no problem with you, obviously, because you've got to impact on the environment. So automation, turn in, I'm going to put in here in brackets, turn the lights off when someone leaves a room. And the last one I'd go for is things like smart meter or smart meter readings. Now, smart meters are useful because they can show you how much energy you are using at that point in time. So let's say, for example, you've got lots of appliances on or you've got lots of lights on in the house, you can then, you know, go around and turn them off and then see your energy then reduce instantly. The next one is describe how the use of ICT has had it both a positive and a negative impact on society. So one thing that I've forgotten to put here is the these are the positive impacts. What about the negative impacts? Okay, so when you're doing these questions, you have to remember we're going to do the positive and the negative. So these are all the positives. Let's look at some negatives that you could have had. So the negative would be e-waste. I'm just having a quick read now because I got the mark scheme on um, another thing. Uh, so e-waste is where you've got electronic waste. So where does it end up? It ends up in landfills. So old PCs might not be recycled. All right. The other thing then to look at is um, things like increased energy usage. Right. If you think when your devices are on in the house, they're using power. Even if they're on standby, they're using power. So there's lots of different things you can have here. The last part there, look, describe how the use of ICT has had a both a negative and a sort of positive and negative impact on society. Well, there's a few things here. I'm just going to put them as plus. So teleworking. No, in fact, we won't be able to use teleworking because we've used it up there. So I'm just going to rub that one out. So um, what you can say is you could say video conferencing again, but we've put video conferencing up there, depending on how we've explained it. Um, we could say uh, staff are able to have new jobs. So staff, and then I'll say new jobs created. Now, if you think of that, going back about 20 years ago, you probably wouldn't have had a social media manager. 
Um, you wouldn't have had anything to do with social media probably going back many years ago, but now companies have things like that or, or social media brand uh, managers, influencers, that type of role. Those are new jobs that have been created. Automation. And robotics. All right, robotics is a really, really big positive because robots can do things a lot faster than humans can do. Um, you could also uh, have something on the lines of educational uses. So, for example, um, we now use uh, learning resources. So we could say virtual learning environments. You can learn 24 hours a day. Now, let's have a look at some negative. Well, the biggest downside with this is social isolation. All right, because you won't be going to an office, you won't be going into a school, you'll be working online solely, so you are going to get a little bit lonely. The other downside, whenever they ask about uh, impact on society, always remember cyberbullying, right? Right, cyberbullying is a big one uh, because it's pretty much comes up in a lot of the mark schemes and it's something that is a big negative impact on society. Now, the last question I'm not going to go through in this um, video because it'll take a long time to write out, but there are examples of last questions on Moodle for you on Study Zone. One thing that I am going to just point out, though, is this. The last question is always going to be worth a lot of marks, and you can see with this one's with eight marks, and it's got... Uh, QWC, it's quality of written communication. So they are going to be looking at things like full stops, capital letters, commas, and so forth, right? So you need to make sure that you are using appropriate language and appropriate punctuation, spelling, and grammar. As a quick tip, if you can't spell something, think of an easier word and try to replace it with that. I'd much prefer to mark something which has the correct spelling and then somebody try to use something um, and obviously spell it incorrectly. If you look at this question here, ICT is used to monitor and control activities. An aspect of this is data logging. Describe two examples of computerized data logging, including the type of sensor. With this type of question, just break it down into sections, right? So obviously, if you're going to be talking about data logging, you could talk about, uh, as an example, like a, uh, a car park barrier or, tr or a car park system. So what would be in a car park? What would be the um, sensor and what would be the, the type of data that would be sort of included. Well, with things like a car park barrier, the sensor would be maybe a proximity sensor, or maybe you'd have a light sensor, or maybe a movement type sensor, something like that. And then what you'd have is when the car comes to a certain point, the barrier will open and then allow you in. If you think of other things such as automatic doors, again, you've got a proximity sensor, or a movement sensor, so if movement's detected, then the doors will open. Think of things like um, greenhouses. You could have a humidity sensor, you could have a temperature sensor, a light sensor. All of these things then you can give a distinct advantage for when you are talking about this. But as I said, these there are examples of these questions on Moodle, please use them. And if you've got any problems, please get in touch with your IT teacher.